Welcome everyone to this special interview as we look towards Public Service Week 2019. We've got a week of activities June 17th to the 23rd. And with me in studio today to discuss Public Service Week 2019 are three ladies who are going to be giving us lots of information that pertains to the public service and what you can expect during the week. Closest to me is Ms. Shanta Lawrence and she's the chairperson for the week of activities. Welcome, Ms. Lawrence. Thank you. And in the center, we have Ms. Peggy Ann Sudat, who is the Acting Permanent Secretary Ministry of the Public Service. Welcome. And to her right, is the Director of the National Competitive Productivity Council, Ms. Fiona Hinkson. Thank you. First of all, the week of activities, we know this has been going on for some time now, Ms. Lawrence. Tell us of some of the activities that we're going to have for Public Service Week 2019. So Public Service Day is really dedicated to celebrating the <clears throat> virtue and value of public service to the community, highlighting the contribution of public officers to the development process, recognizing public officers and as well as encouraging students to pursue careers in the public sector. So to encapsulate all of this, we have carefully put together a number of activities which include on Monday, a job shadowing day where students from the upper secondary schools are invited into the workplace for the day. So they will have on the job experience where they will shadow public officers. On Tuesday, we will be having the departmental staff recognition and appreciation day. So across the public sector, all of the agencies will be recognizing and praising their officers for their dedication and time within the public sector. On Wednesday, we will have the ecumenical service, which will be held at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. And of course, with everything, you have to make time to praise God, because without him, nothing is possible. So we come together as a collective to celebrate, to pray and worship. On Friday, we will be having a health fair where we will be having health screenings, free health screenings to our public um, officers. We will be having a number of health organizations such as Faces of Cancer, the St. Lucia Cancer Society, the St. Lucia Planned Parenthood Association. So some of the screenings would include glucose testing, blood pressure, rapid HIV, syphilis, and so on. So we would like to encourage our public officers as well as the general public to come in and take advantage of this opportunity. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Lawrence, for giving us a very good overview of what's happening for the week. Let's see what Ms. Sudat would, would feel now that the week is being observed and from the administrative point of view and actually looking to get government policy out. What is, is actually various functions of the ministry, the Ministry of the Public Service, something that the, the, the public in general can understand, what's the actual role of this ministry? Okay. First, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all public officers for the work they've been doing, they continue to do and to really <coughs> encourage them. Um, with respect to the work of the Ministry of the Public Service, uh, we serve primarily public officers through the delivery, well, human resource management, for our human resource management efforts, development of officers. Um, so we offer training, etc., to public officers to build capacity and to help them to really take on the challenges of the job. Um, we also are responsible for public sector transformation and this is a very critical role for us as we attempt to improve our service delivery. Um, right now, a lot more has been, government has been called on to do a lot more. The citizens' expectations of government is increasing. Um, there are a number of, of, of areas that are uh, like technology that um, is really changing rapidly and ceaselessly. Um, so it is very important that we keep up with the changes and the demands um, in the environment. Um, so our public sector modernization unit 
attempts to do that or aims I should say to do that we are also responsible for ensuring that um, we provide a safe space for employees to work in um, through our facilities management um, division and it becomes even more critical now that we have been faced we have now faced with a number of issues in the workplace um, so we are really putting a lot of effort into ensuring that we are able to provide that safe space um, because if people are not working in an environment that's conducive to work then it will obviously have an impact on productivity um, so this is what we are about as a Ministry of the Public Service. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Ingson, she just ended off on, on the area of pro productivity, really queuing you in nicely. What is actually productivity and why does it matter to the public service? Okay, so productivity basically measures how efficiently an organization, and in our case, the public service utilizes its resources. You're looking at your workers, your equipment, whatever it is that you use in producing a good or providing a service to the population. So productivity matters for the public service for many reasons. One, the public service is a consumer of tax resources, so it's very important for us to be able to use those resources efficiently. The public service is a major employer of, um, of uh, persons, more than 12% of the public, um, of the <coughs> labor force is employed within the public service. The government provides services, looking at um, business services, um, how well the government is able to provide those services for the private sector when we speak about the cost of doing business. Also provides social services where you look at the quality of the labor force, education, health care, and so on. And the government, there are certain services that only government can provide in terms of policies regarding crime, um, in terms of um, policies regarding national security, public infrastructure, and so on. So it's very important that um, we, we really work very hard in, in, in enhancing productivity because of the role that government plays within the economy. Okay, and you know that you've definitely been ensuring that the members of, of the public service are very much aware of how important that is. Oh, definitely. We've been working, we've been working collaboratively with various agencies of, of government, especially the public se um, service as well. Um, in putting together productivity seminars where we build and increase awareness around those issues. So this is something that is very important and we, we have, we have um, you know, collaborated with all the public, with public officers, sorry, and they in turn seems to be on board with the whole issue of productivity. Thank you very much. We're going to have our first break right now. We'll be back on our program. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Thank you and welcome back to our discussion. I'd like to continue with Ms. Lawrence once more. Ms. Lawrence, you really outlined a very lovely program. Can you give us more intricate details up to these events and how was it, first of all, maybe to, to put together and to, to get uh, the students involved in the work of the public service? Okay, so because um, public service is really dedicated to encouraging young persons to pursue careers within the public service, we felt that it was necessary to allow them to get hands-on experience, to allow them to experience what it is, uh, and so they would be able to make a determination as to whether this is the way forward for them. So we will be having 36 students um, across the Department of Finance, Equity, Sustainable Development, External Affairs, Department of the Public Service, Department of Justice, to name a few. And so these students will be assigned to various individuals within the various sections to shadow them. So they will actually be working for the day. Okay, mm -hmm. and the other e events that you have, tell us a bit more about them. On Tuesday, the various agencies, as I indicated earlier, will be hosting their staff recognition and appreciation day. So we have allowed them to determine what format or structure it will take 
And so based on the feedback that I received from some of the agencies prior to the week of activities, some of them have organized to have um, staff retreats. Some of them will be having um, a short um, activity where they will come together as a collective and the HODs will appreciate the officers. So we think this is necessary because when persons feel that they are valued and their work is appreciated, then they will go the extra mile to produce even more. On Wednesday, we have the ecumenical service. And again, we would like to encourage all public officers as well as the general public to attend this event. Although we have recognized in the past that the turnout has not been very good, but we, would we want to inform everyone that it is an important activity. It is for us and it begins with us. So if we are to achieve the objective, all of us need to play our part and it begins with the, the service. So we would like persons to attend that as well. On Friday, of course, this activity will culminate the week of activities and that is the health fair. So we will have the various agencies. We have a number of departments from the Ministry of Health, such as the Environmental Services Department. We have the HIV um, program unit. We have the Community Nursing Program, and they will be responsible for conducting all of the free health screenings. Again, St. Lucia Cancer Society and Faces of Cancer will be on site to offer advice, to offer guidance, you know, to share their stories and experiences with others who might be going through what they have been through. And so we think it is important because a healthy workforce is a productive one. Oh, excellent. Lots of activities we need. we've been given a breakdown. The health fair seems like something that will attract public servants. How has the response been over the years to that event? Um, the health fair actually, um, since I have been chair of the committee, is um, the first time that we'll be hosting it. Last year what we had was a, an open house event where the various agencies uh, depicted what they do as an agency. Um, but this year, with the increased, um, with the increased number of cases of um, chronic illnesses and all of those you know, health issues, we thought it was critical to focus on that and this is the reason for introducing the health fair as part of the activities this year. And what can you do to get the, the public servants to come out, especially for your ecum ecumenical service? You said that the turnout hasn't really been what you wanted in the past. We have been doing a lot of the PR work, public relations work, of course, um, with the assistance of GIS, with the assistance of the private media as well. And of course, we have a number of the agencies represented on the committee, the planning committee. So we have been trying to put the information out there, um, be sure, um, ensure that persons are aware of the service because some of the feedback that we got is that sometimes persons were not aware. So we want to ensure that the PR is done and it is done well so that we can expect a good turnout this year. But I'm sure that you would have um, your week of activities also posted within the various ministries to ensure that you get that extra boost when it comes to that. Yes, yes. we do have a number of flyers highlighting the various activities. Yes. Okay, great. Mr. So that you did mention the fact that we are looking towards uh, modernization of the public sector and there are a number of areas that I'm sure that the ministry is thinking of. Can you tell us about any of those to mm -hmm. ensure that there's continued um, movement upwards in terms of the deliveries of the services of the public service? Okay. Well, first I want to say modernization of the public service, or well, some of us would have referred to it over the years as public sector reform has been ongoing. And for those of us who have been in the public service for a very long time, and even members of the public will, will can tell you where we came from and where we are now. Um, it is ongoing, it is not based on the demands out there, the expectations from governments, um, our budget constraints, technological advancements, and so on. Um, it is something that must we must have ongoing. Um, within the Ministry of the Public Service, we have identified some critical areas, and a lot, a lot of well, some of it is related to actual to digital services. And we are currently working on some projects that would allow us to digitize certain government services um, within the next few years. Um, we are hoping to put some services online by the end of this fiscal year, and this would include things like 
the application for a driver's license, the birth certificate, putting um, the application for birth certificates online, death certificates, marriage certificates, etc. Um, and this has started in earnest. So we we are certain that by the end of this year we would see some movement with this. Um, but. There are a number of services that we would like to put online over a period of time, and these are going to be phased out over maybe three years and so on. But reform is happening in a number of areas in the public service. Um, we have some that are very obvious, some that are, um, you know, have, that has been dramatic. In some cases, we have some incremental changes that um, have really assisted in the delivery of service to the citizens of St. Lucia. And this is very important. Um, it's about delivering value. And so public sector modernization is not concentrated in the Ministry of the Public Service, but most agencies across the public service have ongoing initiatives to take us to that point. And like I said, it is ongoing, so it's not something that you could start and finish today or at the end of this year or at the end of this month. It is ongoing and it is something that is necessary to take us to the point where we could deliver a better service to citizens. Yes, and I, and I suppose that most of these areas that you're tackling has been determined after some requests by the public. You must be getting the feedback and some of the services that would like you to, to really yeah. improve upon and make it easier for them. Yeah, well, well of course, um, you know, government the agencies themselves sometimes know based on the experiences and the feedback from stakeholders, etc. where is it they want to go. Um, there are other things that are happening in the environment that will push us to that point that this is where we need to go. But this is whatever we do and if, however, wherever the demand comes from, there must be some sort of, of stakeholder consultation to ensure that we are moving in the same direction, whether it be our internal stakeholders, our external stakeholders, or whoever, because we want to know that when we are making the change and we are moving, people are moving with us, um, because that is the only way we could sustain it, we could make it successful, etc. So we are going to just have our, our second break in a moment, but I, I'm sure that there's room that you uh, get to be able to monitor some of the needs of the public that will help you execute what you need to go forward in terms of modernization. Yes, well, as a public service, um, we are, you know, you must be on the ground. You must know what the customers want. You must be talking to them, getting a feel from what they, for, the, for what they want. We have their complaints all the time. That should be a cue for us that, you know, what we are doing or not doing, what we should be doing better. Um, in terms of having an organized approach to taking on these um, issues, to, uh, sorry, identifying the issues, um, we probably need to do a little better with that. But based on our interaction on a daily basis, and some agencies may be, uh, may be interacting with the, public, with, with the public more than others, but based on that interaction that we have with them, we get a very good feel of what it is they want, bearing in mind that we also know where we want to take that public service to. Um, so it goes both ways. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, after we've made these changes, we need to ensure that these changes are sustainable. And that is why I spoke about making sure that everybody's on board, but more importantly, monitoring these changes after they have been implemented. Thank you, Mr. Abbey. We're going to take our second break on the program. We'll be back in just a moment. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt as proof of the transaction is available. Thanks for staying with us. We're into our final segment on our program. Well, Ms. Singson, I know there must be certain barriers for, for, for productivity. Um, how do you see the transformation coming about despite these barriers? Okay. So we, like I said um, earlier, we work with the stakeholders both in the public sector and the private sector. So for the public sector, what we did in 2016, we carried out a survey and we met with 
sec um, public servants, both at the manager le managerial level and also line staff. And they gave a number of recommendations on how we can transform the public service. So for instance, um, recommendations with regards to establishing standard operating procedures so to build more efficiency within the service. They need to adopt new technologies. And I'm very happy to hear Ms. Suda talk about the, um, the ongoing e-government um, project that is happening. And I believe that we will definitely be able to, to solve this issue. Um, also, the need to remove unnecessary procedures and systems that create bureaucracy mm -hmm. within the service. Um, the need to work on our work ethic as a people, not just in the public service, but in the private sector as well, through training and education. We also need to begin to work collaboratively with agencies not working in silos anymore um, to in, an, in an effort to avoid waste and duplication. So these are very important areas to, to break down the barriers so that we can begin to work more effectively. So at the NCPC, we, we see this as very important goals and we, we try to, especially during Productivity Awareness Week, we try to highlight some of those issues and we try to get agencies to, um, to display their work, especially those agencies that are really doing really um, productive, productive um, work showing great initiatives or work towards transforming the public service. So we want to work on this because we have Productivity Awareness Week coming up in October as well. So for us, um, those barriers, um, we know that there's hope and we believe that through those efforts from uh, um, the Department of Public Service, we begin to get there. Yes, I mean, what a natural barrier would be is that the, the same <coughs> brush that they paint all public servants with, you know, like there seems to be a general tendency that there's a, you know, a, very low productivity. I know that is something that your your council has taken on, you know, quite feverishly. Has you has there been any improvement as far as that public perception? Yeah. So I, I get that all the time. I, I I hear from the private sector. Well, if you need to improve productivity, go back to the public sector. But I can tell you there are a lot of hardworking public servants. I mean, maybe there were one or two who spoil it for everybody else. But the public servants are working very hard. We provide services to the to the public. And we know that there are places where we are very successful. You had to get a hardworking public servant in doing that. But in the area of productivity, we need to continue to build awareness around those issues. It is not a, a, a sprint, but it's a marathon. We have to continue the work. And we believe that people are now more aware with regards to um, productivity. You hear people talk about it more than they used to before. And um, when you look at our levels of productivity on a national basis, we see that it is low in comparison to states, small states like ours. However, we have seen some improvement happening over the past two years. Thank you, Pamela Singh. And as long as we're going to go into some final comments from you, what's your feeling now going into the week? You know, you've had experience of um, being part of um, committees that have organized Public Service Week. What, how are you feeling this year? Um, very good. In fact, um, seeing the students excited about coming to the workplace this morning, so it's a start of a good week. And I just want to, again, encourage our public officers to participate because we can only achieve our objective as a collective. Um, I'm sure we will all agree that we would like to see a better public service, one of excellence and good governance as our theme depicts. And so we all have a part to play and we would like to encourage everyone to come out and support the activities. Ms. Willard, some closing remarks on you. Um, I would like to really support Ms. Lawrence um, in encouraging public officers to turn out. Um, this week is set aside for the celebration of public officers and we hope that we could get people to recognize and understand the role they play in national development. So I would like to support her in encouraging people to turn out and to be part of the activities. Okay, Ms. Singson, I know that you started at the, at the beginning of this segment, but I'm sure that you would be keen on maybe the activity that you're obviously recognizing persons in the workplace. I'm sure that would impact on productivity as Ms. Ms. Lawrence hinted. Most definitely. And I want to also, you know, add my voice to encouraging public servants to come out. You work very hard during the year. This is your time to celebrate your achievements. This is the time to celebrate your hard work. 
and to come out to join the activities, especially the, the service, and be part of all the, all the um, fun that has been put together for you. Yeah. Okay, so the actual day of the observance is the 23rd, but the week is actually most of the celebration because it's actually on, on a Sunday. So we are happy that you were able to come in studio today and share with us the program that you have for Public Service Week 2019. So I'd like to take this opportunity, opportunity to thank the three of you for coming in. Ms. Shanta Lawrence, the chairperson of the organizing committee for Public Service Week 2019, the acting permanent secretary in the Ministry of the Public Service, Speggy Ann Sudat, and also Fiona Hinkson, the director of the National Competitive and Productivity Council. Thank you once more for being part of our program. Thank you. Thank you. We'd also like to thank you, our viewers, for being part of our program, and we look forward to your support of the public service.